my name is Chris Bilker, and I'm the, the director of the Shaka Library. Um, as all of you graduate or undergraduate or diaconate, you will be you, you will be required to write papers, academic papers, research papers. So I'm sure I will see you all down in the library. And I encourage everybody to use the library. Um, I'm just going to lay out a, a few general rules and uh, policies that we have. Um, the first thing I'll touch on is when we are open, when we're accessible. The library is open 8.30 to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday and 12 to 5 on the weekends. Um, you as students, once you have an ID badge, which I'll talk about in a second, you have the general access to the library is 8.30 to 4.30. That means the doors are unlocked and open. Anybody can come in. The general public can use the library. Other institutions can come and use it. After 4.30, the, the door locks and is accessible still to our faculty and students uh, via the use of their ID card. Um, if you need to use the library on the weekend outside of the hours of 12 to 5, if you contact us and let us know, we can make, can make arrangements for that to happen. Um, uh, the other thing is this, will, this ID card that I talked about before is going to serve as your library card. It'll, it'll also get you into the library. Um, you'll use this to release print jobs and to buy meals. So you're going to want to get this right away. This kind of has one foot in the, in the technology discussion, but you get this in the technology office. I encourage everybody to do that. If you have time to do it today, you should try to do it today. If not, you're going to want to do this as soon as possible next week once the semester actually gets underway because it's going to become very inconvenient for you if you don't have these because you're not going to be able to print or make copies. Um, if you're here in the evening, you won't be able to get into the library without you know, bothering the security guards. And, you know, in the first week, they're going to be, everybody's going to have this problem, so it's not, that won't be a big deal. But at, once the semester gets underway, you're going to want to make sure that you have this and you have it with you at all times. Security would like you to wear it at all times or on your neck, which you'll be given a, a lanyard to do so. I mean, if you really, really hate to do that, as long as you have it on your person and can display it if you're called to, you're going to, it's going to be convenient for you to have it easily accessible anyhow to open doors, to release prints, and all that. Where do you get I said you can get this in the technology office, which Ms. Sermont will show you on, the, on your tour. Um, maybe even she may drop you off there at the end of the tour so you can, as many of you as they're able to get, can get a badge today so that you'll be hit the ground running next week when the semester starts. You know, as I mentioned, you're all going to be writing papers and using the library. Um, if anybody is not familiar with the way that uh, an academic library works, or if you're confused by anything in our particular library, I urge you to stop down, um, get, talk to somebody on the staff, or call and make an appointment, and one of us can walk you through the general, general the way the library works, and more specifically, the way it will work for you when you're writing papers. I know that uh, there is a, a research and writing class in both the graduate and undergraduate school, and they'll be discussing some of that as well. But if you want a little bit more, I mean, the, the fancy word is bibliographic education, we're, we'd be ha happy to do that for you. Um, as this semester unrolls, we will be rolling out a, an online tutorial about how to use our library. That's, that's not quite ready to go yet, so you're stuck with having to talk to one of us in the library. Um, the library, we don't stand on formality, so if you come downstairs in the library and you don't see somebody, come on back in the office and grab one of us and we will we'll help you out. Um, you can check out books for a period of three weeks. Um, you, and there's two optional extensions of that for additional three weeks. So if you really if you use, need something, you can use it for the whole semester. You can pretty much have it for most of that time. If you need it beyond the, three, the nine weeks that you can extend it, then we'll, we'll take a look. If nobody else has requested that particular resource, then we'll probably grant it to you. Now, there, we do have an overdue fee of 25 cents per day per book. So keep track of your books. Make sure they come back so you don't get socked with a, with a hefty uh, overdue fee. Um, you can, you can through, through the website, you can log into the library, the library page in the website. You can search the catalog. You can monitor what you have out. You can see if you have anything coming up overdue. You can send us messages. You can renew Do your Do you mind if I go through that with them online? Oh, uh, not at all. While you're explaining that, yeah. that, sometimes I think it helps students to to know how to navigate some of the online okay. things. Um, just go directly to the website. Okay. Yeah. Oops. All right. 
You can either go through this via library here on our website. Uh, down at the bottom of the related card catalog. Okay, and there's a card catalog we'll cross link the fingers here. And hope it goes through what it's supposed to do. Hopefully it goes. Maybe it does. I think uh, we've got a the box will pop up, I think. Oh, where am I going? I don't know where to go for We are we're taking steps to where this if you go right just go to the address bar. At L I B. That's where I was gonna take it originally. Um, if you want to go directly to the library, I want you to write this down. This is probably on your information sheet in your packet on the right-hand side under the library section. It would be http colon backslash backslash lib dot, excuse me, shms.edu. If you just type that in, I did a comma. I see that, yes, and I'm having some difficulty getting the backslash. This is a quick way for you to see, as Chris mentioned, this is our library online. So if you want to search for a book, you can go up to this online library catalog. You can search by title, author, subject, ISBN number, call number, series. Okay. Now this is, what's, what shows up immediately here is a, very, is a basic search with the most general categories. If you, want to, if you want to do a more qualified search, you can search right under there where it says advanced search. Right and it, here? It'll give you you can you can do more more options, more different types of qualified searches, and they can be linked searches. You can qualify them date range, and if you really specifically know what you're looking for, this sometimes is easier. You don't have to sort through quite as many. Results. I noticed there was a login and password. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if you go back to the main right page, right here. This is where you will use the same login you use for your email, for everything. But we haven't covered that yet. I intend to cover that in this orientation. Too. All right. When when you cover that, that goes through the. Right. And it's, you just, it's your last name, not first name, and then the, de the password that you've been given, or whatever you change it to. Um, for, when you're logged in, you pretty much will, this will look the same, unless, unless you have books out or, or messages pending. You don't, you don't need the SHM. I don't? Nope. Okay. All right. It might confuse. It really is their last name and not their ID number? Right. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Okay, so this is me. I just checked in. So if Tamara had books checked out, they would all be listed there. If she had made any requests for holds, they would be listed there. If she had any overdues or fines, they would also it would be listed be there right too. there. Um, okay. If you scroll down, um, Technology is not so yep. easy. In the card catalog uh, lookup section, if you're looking for a specific book, you find it. Will it tell you if the status of that book is yep. uh, on? Yeah, it'll, in, it'll say if it's if it's checked out or checked available. available. For instance, if I'm looking for a title, I'm going to do a, a title search based on screw tape letters. This is a C.S. Lewis book, and I go. There you can see the book, the yeah, screw tape letters. If you click on the click on the actual title there, it'll bring up the more the, <coughs> the specific records of this particular item. And you'll see the, the basic publication information, and then down there you'll see the call number, and, it's, and then the status is available. If that was checked out, it would say checked out, or it's either going to be available, checked out, or on reserve. If it's on reserve, that means that one of your professors has put this on reserve. And it'll it'll be on a shelf in the front of the library with that under that professor's name, and in, in that case it is treated as a reference book, which means that it doesn't circulate, but you can use it in the library as much as you need. You can make photocopies and all that. Um, you'll also see where it says the collection is books. That means that it's it's circulating. If the collection says reference, that means that it's a reference book and does not circulate. Um, if you're if you want to if you're logged in and want to hold that book, right up there, you see where it says place a hold. Um, and then what that will do is we will get a we will get a list each morning that we look at that says these are the list of books that our students have requested 
and then it'll be held for you, and then you'll get a message in your, your Sacred Heart email that the book is here, ready for you to pick up. Um, you can also renew your book through this process, too. Yeah, and you can renew it up, like as I said before, up to three times. The third time, it won't let you do it. Uh, after, after three times, I won't let you do it, and then that's when you can call us, and then we'll, we'll make an arrangement. We always try to, we try to make arrangements for, we try to make sure everybody needs what they, and if it gets to a point where you have a book checked out, and you, you want to make that fourth renewal, and he's looking for the book, then what we'll do is we'll try, like, we'll try to make an interlibrary loan of the book for you, meanwhile you bring the book back in, then he can check it out. Can, can you explain uh, what happens if you get have your card book? Um, the card is essentially just uh, just a list. The card doesn't function for checkout or anything. Okay. If you're if you're in the if you're searching through like hundreds of pages of results, you can add you can add books to your cart, and it'll essentially will save them as a list that you, then you can then go back to. And okay. Check and then the next one then save your list as it takes a list and just adds it to that. Yeah. If you if you have if you've created a list, you may have a different list for each class, yeah. and you can add it to those yeah. lists. You can also, once you're logged in, you can also make um, acquisitions requests. If you're, if you're looking for a book that we don't have, and you really think if your professor's mentioned it a dozen times and we don't have it in our library, you can make a suggestion for us to pick it up. And we will, we, we, again, usually uh, weekly we look at the acquisitions suggestions that come from the faculty and, this, and the student body. Um, go back to the main Good. page there. One more thing I want to mention on the website. If on, on the side here it says useful links, you'll see the philosopher's index, New Testament abstracts, Old Testament abstracts, APLA periodical. What these are, these are subscription databases that, that our library pays to subscribe to, and they're offered to you as students. If you're here in the building, you'll just go right to them. If you're at home, and you click on one of these things, a little thing is going to pop up. We're going to need to enter your username and password again. And it's going to be the same username and password combination that you used, that you would use to log into the library or your email. That way, we can, that, way that keeps it within our licensing, that only our students can use it. So if somebody navigates to this website who is not a student or a member or a faculty, they would not be able to access those things. They could search our catalog as much as they want, but they wouldn't be able to use some of these more specified resources. These are great resources for you to use when you get started to when you get started writing papers. They're going to show you uh, citations, some full text, uh, periodical documents from, uh, like especially the ATLA periodical database. There's a lot of full text stuff there from scholarly peer-reviewed journals that are going to be helpful to you when you start writing papers. Um, aside from that, I just urge everybody to, yeah, do you have questions? Yes. Yeah, please. Please. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the um, uh, catalog and requests are linked to your uh, Sacred Heart email account. Yeah. Is this the only account that it can be attached to? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's you know as as when you talk about that you'll discover that's going to that's sort of the official means of communication. So the, this is the system is engineered to send you your late notices to your Sacred Heart email. Any if, other questions regarding the library? And again, as I said, I encourage, when you look, come down to the library and wander around and sort of see how it's organized. And if, if it causes you any kind of confusion or you can't find stuff, please stop us. And we will we'll sit down with you for as long as you need. Make sure that you understand how the library is organized and um, how to find stuff, even how to, how to best conduct research in the library. Um, we have, it's a great collection. It's the largest theological collection in Michigan one of the largest in the Midwest. Um, it's growing every year, and the, the, we, uh, we take a lot of care to make sure that the, the collection we have suits the curriculum. So um, any, any further questions? Or if not, please come down to see us in the library and, and get your ID badge as soon as possible.